Hello everyone and welcome to this review video for Aurora 3D Presentation. Today I'm going to be talking you through everything you need to know about this software and as usual if you do have any questions please leave them in the comment section down below. Also I'll be leaving a discounted link in the video description so that you can always get your money's worth for this software. So 3D Presentation by Aurora is essentially in the simplest terms, imagine Microsoft PowerPoint, but it has 3D capabilities. So instead of just having a completely 2D thing, you can create 3D worlds almost for each of your slides. So as you can see here, we have our world and we have our slide and we have our hierarchy. So it's very simple in terms of how it's laid out. It's very easy to use. And it looks like any, you know, any typical uh, Office app that you would find, like LibreOffice and things like that. However, it does obviously have those 3D aspects to it. So Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and create a few slides just to actually get to work with. Now, we have two options at the top where we have common, which is just the ability to add shapes, objects, and text. A few options for the fill and the effects and the text, obviously, formatting and things like that. And then you have the presentation tab, which is more or less where we can edit what the actual background and the atmosphere and the world and environment that we are in is going to look like. But we're going to begin with the common tab. So first of all, I'm going to navigate to the main tab and we're going to go ahead and create a straight up piece of 3D text. Now we can choose whether we want it to be 2D or 3D. This does still have 2D capabilities. Do not get me wrong. This is also a regular uh, slideshow app if you do want to use it like that. However, it is obviously tailor-made for 3D aspects. So hitting 3D horizontal text immediately lets us drag and create that text. Now what this will then allow us to do is to edit what we want this to say. We're just going to make it say opulent. There we go. And then on the right we can change a few bits of the information and a few sort of aspects of it. So we can change the text bevel height, the depth, the size, the, be uh, the shape bevel height, the node size and the node depth. So this is all to do with the location or you can use these sort of um, these arrows here in order to move the different nodes. So you obviously would need to make them bigger or smaller but as you can see you're also able to move these right to left. All the different locations that you want but we want it to be more or less in the middle um, but you can also adjust these from the right hand panel as well now once you've created it you want to be able to sort of have a little look around your area so instead of just doing it back and forth you can jump between the slides here but if you want to be able to navigate the interface of which you are on you want to navigate yourself down to this bottom bit here now you have editing size edit position and edit rotation so this depends on the node that you are on but what you're then able to do is actually go around very simply and what you're able to do is right click and hit this camera lock button. Now what this allows us to do is this will lock the camera to one location. As you can see, I'm moving my mouse and dragging things, but the only thing that I can drag is the text. But hitting camera lock, holding middle click allows us to move everything around and we're able to navigate all around this 3D environment that we've got. So it's really, really nice to be able to use. You see, the one thing with this is you can make it much more seamless and sort of have things go from one to another. It looks like it's just almost like a video that's playing or an animation in a game. But in truth, it's actually just flicking from one slide to another. So going to the next slide, this will immediately remove what we've got and we can add 3D shapes now if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and add an ellipse and as you can see it's very very simple what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually change the shape bevel height and actually sort of curve it slightly like that and you're able to do this as much as you want to sort of have the 3d text sort of any way you want so as you can see I've just imported a t-shirt here now what you can do is go to the object tab and actually, when you hit import a 3D model, it will bring you to the pre-installed list of assets that are already installed when you install the software that you are able to add. So hitting on this, as you can see, we can go ahead and hit OK, and it will bring us immediately to this page here, where you have all of these different 3D things that you can add. So if I wanted to add, for example, a Swiss Army knife and hit yes, that will add a 3D Swiss Army knife into our thing, which we can rotate around. And as you can see, it's completely 3D. Really, really nice, and you can move it however you like. So that's a really interesting thing that you are able to add. Now under the hierarchy tab, this is basically where you can see the list of things that are on top of another. In very simple terms, if you think of say Photoshop for instance, this is the layers very, very easily and that's the easiest way to sort of say it. So you can give things sort of permissions over other things or authority over other sections for example. So you have your knives on one page and then you're also able to have things that are above or what you can do is group them all together. So instead of having them as individual objects, you are able to drag them all into the same option and then have them all 
editable at the same time. So as you can see, this is now one entire node, uh, which looks rather bizarre because of the aspect ratio that I've got. But you are able to then combine things together, meaning if you wanted to have a group of things all combined, maybe some food on a plate, which are all individual 3D models, you'd be able to have them all done together nicely. But heading back to the slide list, this is therefore what the two slides are going to look like. Now, it really depends on how you can do it. You can actually adjust the overall frame rate of what you've got um, at the bottom here. And going through a few more of the options, you can also open an interactive panel where you can add animations and also sounds and everything like that. You can add keyframes, options like that in order for things to sort of move in and then slide to the next page. It's really up to you. You can also reset the camera by resetting the position and the direction of where the location is. So hitting that, everything will go back to the original space it was when it was originally imported. You can also preview the presentation. So as you can see, just using your, uh, your scroll wheel on your mouse, you can filter through every slide that you've got you can also use this option down here in order to play the presentation in full screen that's completely up to you though you can also edit the size of the of, of the particular nodes and objects that you've got that's also a useful feature that you've got you can drag things around with the option button which when you want to move something and transform it this is obviously the one that you're going to want to use the most and then you can also rotate things as well by using the rotation key and using the options there but as you can see all i would do in order to rotate it is use these nodes that we've already Already got the green one obviously to do the specific oh almost went wrong there um to obviously rotate it every direction that you well please you can edit the scale as well if you wanted to and also just overall change the sort of the size and the width of everything as well down here these are more of the transforming options if you wanted those to exist as well now going to the presentation option you can actually go and choose all of the different backgrounds that you've got so as you can see we've got skybox at the moment and this is the very very simple one that we've got however you can change this to realistically anything that you want so if you wanted a gradient we'd be able to maybe select two colors that we wanted so we'd go onto this option down here we set the color and we go to red and hit ok on that one and then you can also select the second gradient and also the option of which the gradient is going to be so whether you want it to be a circle gradient whether you want it to almost be like one of those countdown things on the old films or whether you just want it to gradually fade from one color to another and you can also have two different options it's completely up to you but we're going to do the circle one and go ahead and hit ok and then immediately what we've got is our option as you can see here we go. You can also add background music. So if you want the music to be in the background, that is also an option that you're able to have. Themes, you're also able to select any custom themes that already exist. Obviously, we've already selected ours to be a particular thing, so it won't change. And may I very quickly add, as you can see, these other two, you it will appear at first to have not changed, but all you would need to do for the actual preview to display the right background and any edits that you've made is you want to select that, of course, because it won't render anything that you've done on a different thing. It will have to render it across once you've completed them all you also have preview full screen play which are the two options that we originally had down here and you also do play setup and use particular rehearsing timings now going up to the very very top now you can basically move through all of the different options that you've got for different toolbars so a toolbar as you can see you can choose to hide or get rid of slide list hide or get rid of and interactive mode as well you can either hide or get rid of that as well presentation the same options that we had here the slide as you can see you can insert Cutty, uh, cut, copy, paste, all of those different options, um, rendering engine and language, and then obviously under help as well. Now, one very quickly thing that I do want to add is, as you can see, most of these features are very self-explanatory. We have the you know, cut and paste and things like that, undo and redo. But what we want to have a very quick look at is the add action button. Now, this is where the animation aspect really comes into play. If we go to node animation, for instance, in any of these, what we're able to do is move those during the actual slide so it's a little bit like when you have a fly-in effect on text on regular powerpoint but it's a little bit more intuitive so going for a template if we select let's say we'll go for in move right that object will then fly from the right and move into where the original position was so going ahead and very quickly playing this and going to presentation and hitting preview that object that we had selected and as you can see it was a particular aspect of the knife it will fly in and that's what's really in interesting about this you see each knife is not just an individual 3d object it's actually many different 3d things compiled into one thing and that's one of the you know the benefits of this software it's not just moving one individual thing you could have like things 
move out. If you had like maybe uh, like an object that you were selling or a product that you're selling and you want to show what's inside it, you can make the whole thing expand, show the insides, have labels fly around left, right and center, show what it is and then it all goes back together and then starts to rotate. That's just one of the potential things that you can do. And that is one of the main things that you need to obviously learn on this software. It's as simple as simply dragging it and you can also use their template library at the bottom right here in order to find everything that you need. So it's very, very useful. So why might somebody want to use Aurora 3D presentation? And the answer behind that is very simple. Somebody might want to use this because they need those 3D capabilities. Maybe they're not good at graphic design. Maybe they're not entirely sure how to animate, you know, things coming in and out of, it, of, it, of one another. And you just want to have a simple software where models that you already have or images that you've already had and any templates that this website also has, you can just use them and you can make something that looks really, really effective and a bit more interactive. Because at the end of the day one of the things is death by powerpoint we all remember that phrase having somebody with a powerpoint behind you just flicking through it it can be very very dull so having something 3d and interactive just gives a spin on that and makes it much much more enjoyable to actually watch the actual software is very intuitive to learn it's very very easy it's got quite an old interface but that does not uh, you know prohibit any of the aspects of it it works absolutely flawlessly but that is definitely why i would recommend this software but thank you everyone so much for watching. I will see you next time and for now, goodbye.